This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're very pleased to be joined again by Tor Morton Olson, President, Maritime, Marlink. Absolutely, nice and, to be here again. And we're here at the SMM 2022 to discuss a, a topic that's near and dear to Marlink's heart and yours, which is uh, continued movement towards digitalization. Yeah. Uh, so Tor Morton, uh, just to start off, uh, the, the, the topic of digitalization is very broad and diverse, but I understand you have uh, an interesting project uh, with Bureau Veritas as classification heads towards the digitalization of their services and just the better use of data. Yeah. Can you give us a little background on that? Yeah, we, uh, we can. Uh, I think we, are, um, we have a joint responsibility together with the class societies to ensure that we enable digitalization efficiency improvements for, uh, for our customers. And, one big part of what CLASS is doing is uh, certification of the vessels where we can utilize communication and, and make those remote and much more efficient than, than what has previously been the case. I think also CLASS societies are great influencers uh, on uh, the ship owners and particularly related to new builds to ensure that we, that we plan for the future with the capabilities connectivity will bring, uh, not only today but tomorrow. I think CLASS societies plays an important role there in, in enlightening the, um, the environment of, of what the opportunities will be. So we're very happy to, to work with them and with other class societies uh, to, 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 to really help the industry move forward on digitalization. Okay, so where, where specifically is the project today? Is, is there any physical man manifestation we can discuss? Uh, we are still in a, in, in a defi definition phase where we're working together to really define the scope uh, of, of the program. Uh, but ultimately it, it will uh, basically allow certification uh, to take place in a much more efficient way in the future than, than, than what it does today. Okay. Okay, so what I guess what, and, and like you said, I, I talked to all the class societies as well, and a lot of them have been talking about this movement towards, and <clears throat> it, like everything else, has gotten a, a monumental shove forward courtesy of the last two and a half years yeah, of the all right. shutdown in, in COVID. Um, what, what, what kind of opportunities globally do you see with, with getting in with perhaps not just BB, but also the other classification societies? No, I, th I think uh, with what is happening on, on the marketplace, with, uh, with uh, new connectivity means coming, uh, you know, ability to, uh, to um, have uh, more cloud-based systems connected on board, I think the opportunity for class society to take advantage of data collection, uh, to, to really monitor the performance, uh, to ensure that, uh, that they help ship owners in meeting their ESG requirements and other parameters that they, they need to adhere to is, is absolutely there. So, uh, so we need to define the scope of this together and make sure that we together present the opportunity that that brings for efficiency improvement and, and compliance to, um, to the ship owners. Okay, excellent. Well, again, as I referenced at the outset, we're sitting here at the SM2022. The Marlink booth is uh, packed as <laughs> usual with uh, many interesting conversations, I'm sure. Um, what, what is your, your focus here at the SMM and or you know what, what, what is new what new can we expect from Marlink in the coming year? Yeah, so we are in Germany, right? And, and Germany is, a, is a, from a connectivity perspective, a relatively mature market. People have been used to having broadband on board for years. Uh, so that's why our focus here is really to make sure we bring the new connectivity technologies into the equation, but also that we, we help our customers and take advantage of, of the opportunities that that brings. So it's a lot about uh, you know remote IT, cybersecurity, um, IoT, ensuring that they really use the connectivity opportunities to the benefit of the of their own operation. So I've had uh, meetings uh, these uh, last couple of days with uh, with a lot of the large uh, German shipping companies that are our clients, and also you know Dutch companies, Norwegian companies, and and they're all on the same path. You know how can we at Marlink help them help themselves through the uh, the means of communication, IT. Uh, and in a controlled and secure environment. So, um, so that's where the momentum is currently. Okay, so I'm, I'm sure, I know there are multiple drivers for your business, and I know we've discussed them ad nauseum previously, but when you look today, what, what, what do you see as the big drivers um, for your business just in the next uh, six to 12 months? Yeah, I think there's still, uh, uh, I think still the market is largely underserved uh, in terms of capabilities, and, uh, and with, um, players coming to market like OneWeb who is here at the booth and where we announced um, you think yesterday that we're going to do technical development programs together with them. I think the capabilities of those systems will open up new opportunities uh, also for, for our customers. So in the next six to 12 months I think we will see a more integrated blended connectivity service coming 
And I think you will see uh, people starting to use connectivity in a different way when they trial these, these new systems that are, are, are coming to play. I, as always, I appreciate your time. I just had one more question. Uh, we talk about new markets. Uh, it's not exactly a new market, but uh, traffic and connectivity in the polar region, mm. I know, has been uh, uh, coming for, for several years. Um, but I also understand that you're involved in some research, I believe, uh, looking at the polar region and connectivity issues. Mm. Can you give us a little background on that? Yeah, we can do that. You know, being a Norwegian, uh, the polar region is, uh, is close to our hearts, right? So, uh, so today we see a lot more interest, uh, not only from uh, from uh, governmental, uh, you know, security perspective, but a lot from cruise market uh, and from OSV research vessels uh, that that want to go far north. Uh, this summer we had uh, Commander Charcot from Pona hitting the North Pole uh, for the first time on a vessel. Uh, and we need to make sure that we're able to bring the same connectivity experience to them as, as they can get elsewhere. And with new uh, polar orbiting satellite systems coming to play, that will enable us uh, to ensure a consistent uh, experience, if you like, uh, on board any vessel, uh, whether it's on equator or, or up at the poles or, or down south. So this has a big impact for security perspectives, uh, but it also has a very big impact on, on customer experience for, for both the clients of our offshore customers, but also the passengers and more cruise vessels. So keep them connected while being in the most exotic part of the world. Okay, uh, obviously the world's a, a, a very different place today. There's a lot of interesting activities, a lot of geopolitical unrest, a lot of supply chain issues that are still working themselves out. Um, I know it's a very broad uh, question, a, bro a broad spectrum, but how are these uh, how are these situations mm. impacting your business today? So uh, we could talk about that for hours. I think uh, there's a couple of things I think is, is worthwhile uh, uh, addressing. Uh, first, the the container market and the LNG market is up. Uh, so the ship owners have. Uh, are busy. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on, uh, driven by the energy crisis as a result of the Ukrainian-Russian uh, war. Uh, that is helping stimulating those uh, ship owners to invest in, in more efficient ways to operate. So that's on the good side. On the negative side, the uh, shortage of ship set uh, that, that we're facing globa globally, uh, increased pricing uh, on hardware components, uh, shortage of supply on that is also to some extent hindering growth. Right now we, we have a difficult time in getting getting hold of some of the antenna types that we would uh, we'd like to have. So I hope this will sort itself out. What, what I'm hearing is that within the next you know, four to six months we should be, be all good. But right now the, uh, the, uh, the supply side is, is under pressure. So, so we are delaying some, uh, some projects, some installations because uh, we, we simply cannot get hold of the right equipment. So, our clients are making good money, which is important for their business, which is why we all are here. Uh, at the same time, we need to make sure that the supply side uh, picks up and, uh, and uh, that we, we, we resolve the, short, the shortage of ship situation, which is impacting everybody, you know, being it satellite antenna manufacturers or, or Cisco or whomever. So 